Hey, it's Dennis from midjersey.news. If you like this YouTube channel or if you want to see future things that I'm doing, uh, subscribe. Uh, lower right hand corner, you'll see a little box. Click on that or on the main page, click on subscribe. Yeah, Hunter Mountain is going to open on Friday. Mount Snow opens tomorrow, so I'm getting my snowboard ready for opening day on Friday. That's the day I can get up to the mountains and do a little snowboarding. See if we can get there for first chair. We'll see how that goes. So here's all the tools I have and what pretty much everything you need to t maintain your board throughout the year. Um, you have an assortment of waxes. You can use an all temperature wax where you can use wax for the conditions you're going to be in. I prefer waxes for the conditions I'm going to be in versus an all temp. Sometimes I'll use an all temp though if I'm going on a trip and we'll have wild temperatures. But for this is a warm wax. I usually use this in the spring, spring conditions um, from 32 down to 26. That's your snow temperature. What I'm going to put on for uh, Hunter on Friday, I'm going to use this wax here. It's uh, made from 21 degrees to 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's a cool wax. Uh, we're not going to be super cold on Friday, so I think that's going to be the proper temperature. I happen to use the One Ball J brand. Um, it's always worked well for me, so I pretty much stick to that brand. You can use any brand you want, but uh, this uh, works for me. This here is cold wax. It's good from 12 degrees to 23 degrees. So if it was a little colder out, I would probably put that on instead of the cool wax. When we have the Arctic conditions, uh, you know, you start getting down closer to zero. Uh, this is good at 12, 12 degrees, this starts running out. So when you really start getting down below zero, you put some of this Arctic hardener in your wax. This is good to negative 22 below zero Fahrenheit. So super duper cold conditions, get some of that in there. It'll make uh, glow up going across the flats a lot easier on you. Here is a uh, sharpening kit I bought last year. I happen to fix this one. Uh, this is a multi-tuner and SKS makes this. And uh, this one has some diamond files in it. Comes with a gummy stone. I happen to use a one degree bevel. Uh, some people use zero. I read somewhere to use a one degree, so I've been using one degree for years. Here, this is a snowboard scraper. It's nothing fancy, it's just a piece of plexiglass <clears throat> with the kind stamped on it. That's all you really need. Uh, you can, if you get in a jam, you can use your ice scraper for your car. And then when you're done, you want some of this cloth or like this, uh, like you would use to clean your pants. I use this sometimes or this cloth here. So just give it a polish when you're done waxing. To melt your wax, you're going to need an iron. This is a ski iron. This one's made by Swix. So it has a temperature control on here. And you want it enough to melt the, the wax, but not smoke. So if you start seeing a whole bunch of smoke coming off of there, that's really no good to be breathing in. So uh, you want to set your temperature properly. So the warmer the wax usually needs less temperature. When you start using the Arctic uh, powder, you have to up the uh, temperatures a lot to get that to melt. Now here's a metal scraper and pretty much when you use that, say I had damage on the board and I was going to fill a hole in, you would use these P this P-Tex, it comes in black or clear, and you use this similar to a soldering iron and it was a special adapter It happened to fall out into the box so I couldn't find it, but that's what you plug this in, heats up similar to a soldering iron, you drip the wax on in the hole, you melt it in, you kind of push it in and it melts, and then when it cools down, you would scrape it down and uh, make it nice and flat, and then you would wax. So first thing you do is you're gonna use the, this tool, and then we're gonna sharpen the board, and then after we get done sharpening the board, we're gonna clean the board. I use usually a denatured alcohol 
or isopropyl alcohol and just do a quick clean. Um, there's some deeper cleaners out there, but sometimes I'm afraid of them because they'll damage the base. So I just try to keep it simple um, from too strong. Sometimes you have to use a little something stronger, but I, I always found that alcohol was fine for me. Anyhow, um, next step is we're going to sharpen the board. Okay, we're back at the bench. You can make your own bench. I happen to use this one because it's nice and portable and it's light. <clears throat> I used to use 2x12s that I made in uh, one 2x12 this way and in the ends I just butted them on and I took some pipe <clears throat> insulation and I just put it on there so then when you set your board down it just sat like that and you measure it out about here and here and then you can put it on a 2x12 like that and then you can make your own but then I bought this commercial, it's made by Swix, and uh, it's portable, it's compact, doesn't take up the workbench, so that's what I did. And I used to use just the 2x12s, or 2x10s, whatever works for you. But anyhow, we're going to do this edge first. I used the one degree, <clears throat> pop it in, there's going to be directions here with the arrows and it's going to go that way. So always start the entire length. Don't like just focus in one spot or anything like that. So entire length of the board and press down and we're going to get that edge all the way down front and back. And there's probably all kinds of gurus out there that have their own way of doing things. This is how I do it and it works for me. If you find something that works for you, go with it. Um, just be careful out there. And I guess probably should do a disclaimer that you should follow manufacturer's uh, directions and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, the tuner company probably has a video or something like that you might want to watch and then put your own stuff together and, you know it'll save you money because I spend last year's 45 44 45 days on the mountain and uh, every time you take these to the shop if you took it to the snowboard shop it'd be like $45 for them to tune your board so you know do that 10 times a season and uh, get pretty expensive and you know maybe once in a while it's good to send it over there and put send it down the belt and we're stone grind or something like that but I change boards enough that I don't have to so this is the side edge now That's what you're looking to do is now we did with this edge and then we did this edge and you're kind of like taking out the little nicks and dings and stuff like that on your edge you're not trying to make it like a razor but uh, it does get pretty sharp and it will screw my coat up when I'm carrying it on this side and sometimes it will <clears throat> if you're not careful it will cut through the glove and then when you get done that side flip it over or you just flip yourself, change over. But since we're doing it for the camera, we gotta flip the board. And then start over, do the one edge and the other edge. And then when you're done, you'll detune probably about five to six inches right here. So what happens if you're when you're snowboarding down and these are sharp here in your tip and tail, you'll catch an edge and uh, a lot easier and they'll throw you for a ride I guess a little bit more than what you want but um, that's pretty much down and dirty how to sharpen a board and when I get done sharpening then I'll clean it I use just some um, alcohol uh, isopropyl is fine um, I have some denatured alcohol I buy from Home Depot you don't have to even get that fancy you're just trying to clean the base of the board up before we put the wax on 
so you're not getting dirt into your wax. All right, I just wanted to show you real quick um, the detune. Some people make such a big deal about this as just dulling down the end six inches a little bit. So one, two, three, Super duper big deal. And then a lot of people like to run a gummy stone up and down here, take off any burrs. And that's it. And then we'll do it on this side. Same thing. All right, to do a, just a quick base cleaning, nothing super fancy, just 70% isopropyl alcohol. I guess you can get the 90. I just bump a little bit of that on there. And this bottle happens to be running out, so I'll probably have enough to do the board. Put that on there, rub it in. This has been sitting in the garage all summer, so I'm probably going to pick up a lot of dirt. And you don't want to uh, have that dirt going in your wax. Just turn the towel around, rub it in. And that finally starts coming up clean and we know we're done. Check the weather forecast again. I think we're going to be okay with cool. We could have went with cold. Um, but cool, I think, is fine. And just when the iron heats up, just uh, drip that on. Want to have just enough on there to coat, coat the board. You don't want to overdo it because it's just more stuff you're going to have to scrape off when you're done. So just keep going around in circles like this, and uh, you'll see the wax melt. You know, just make sure it melts really good. And uh, that way the wax helps it get into the base. And you can even feel the, if you put your hand on the other side, you'll feel the board warm up. So you know. And then you don't want to have the iron too hot either because you don't want to delaminate your base from the board. temperature selections proper. So if your wax is smoking, you definitely probably too hot. And uh, you don't want to be melting your plastic. That's four base on this one. This is a launch eco board. It's supposedly made from the uh, most environmentally selected products at the time of production. So I think it's got bamboo and some different things in there that's more eco-friendly. I think the most, the least eco-friendly part on here is the base because there's really not much you can do to get around a good base yet yeah, anyway. Maybe they invent something. But I know I met the owner a bunch of times and a uh, pretty good company and they stand behind their stuff. So uh, they are in New Jersey, they're a New Jersey company. Uh, they're a little bit up North Jersey, and I've been riding their gear for probably, I don't know, at least eight years or more. So I stand behind their product, and uh, 
you know, I change boards out. I'm doing 44 days, 50 days a year uh, is my goal this year, so probably mid-season or so, I'll see what, what they come out with and, you know, this will become the next hand-me-down board to somebody as I move into a new launch eco board. So that's the ultimate recycling is to put somebody else on a board and get them started into it. So I have a couple people, one I started teaching last year, I don't know, he's off to college, so we'll see if uh, he gets up to Hunter much this year. And then I know some other people, one in the military, and uh, problem with him, he's got to come up from uh, down south. But right now the uh, Epic, talking about the military stuff, 199 you'll get an Epic local pass. The same pass I'm paying, you know, over $700 for. So they, Vail Resource does take care of uh, veterans and active duty and retirees from the military. Even if you're a dependent military, uh, you, get a, you get a deal too. So check into that before that expires. So I think around Thanksgiving they stop selling them Epic passes. You know, because it goes into full season and you're buying day tickets and depending on where you're going on a Vail Resort, you're talking $218 at Vail, at least that was the price last year, I'm sure it's higher, to around $189 over at, uh, over at Breck. So if you're going out west at all, and even on the east coast, I'm sure they're not going to be cheap. Just keep uh, going around in circles and you'll see the wax melt into the board. And make sure you got it covered on your edges. And kind of going a little faster than plants. I'm just going to go back and get some of this just to make sure it melts into the base. And usually where the uh, bolts are for the uh, your bindings, hit it a little extra. But you don't want to overheat that because then you're, you'll mess your board up. If, you're, if your iron's too hot, uh, you can screw with the bolts in your board. So temperature is important. Just enough, you just want to do this enough so this wax melts into the base. Don't overdo it. Don't let the iron sit there either. So keep, keep it moving, um, that's the best advice I can give you. Okay, I'm going to finish this up and then uh, when this cools down I'll show you how to scrape the board. But I'm just going to go down here, all the way down to the tail of the board and uh, just keep melting this into the base. How it's done. And it doesn't hurt to go back over a little bit, but just make sure you don't overheat the board. It's good about having a uh, an actual ski iron versus an iron is that this is temperature controlled. So um, to ski waxes, which is kind of important, so you don't overheat. You can still do it, but hopefully into the design here, they have it so it doesn't screw your stuff up. Okay, it's, the board's cooled down enough. We're going to use this uh, plexiglass scraper to scrape the board down. We're going to start from one side, work our way down. We're going to scrape all the wax off, all the excessive wax is coming off, and then we're done. I'm going to go over and polish it with this here. And then when we're done polishing, we're going to flip the board over, we're going to check tightness on all the bolts, uh, make sure nothing came loose during the heat up and cool down process, and we're going to check the bindings out, make sure everything's tight and we're good to go for Friday. So I'm going to put this, the scraper down, and then scrape. And you'll see wax come off. All 
like sense of wax. I try to put the wax on thin so you have less to scrape off. So it's a little easier. And some people don't even go up all the way on to the tip and tail. But I do. So make sure you All kinds of gurus out there, so I'm sure somebody will watch this and say you're doing it wrong. But this is the way I've been doing it for I don't know, I've probably been waxing my own board for 20 years. So. Alright, so I'm gonna continue this. And then when I get done, I'll come back and I'll show you how to polish the board. Okay, all the excessive wax has been removed. And don't do this in the house. Don't do it over the carpet. Go into a garage or do it outside. Because if you drop melted wax into your carpet or something in your home, uh, you're not gonna get that out. So. Go in the garage, I got a cement floor here. I'm done, I just sweep it up and throw it away. So, taking a fiber cloth of some type there that just bought from Home Depot, or you can take the back of a scrunch pad. <clears throat> and it's just, the board was ready to go that way, but this just puts a nice little finishing touch to it. I wish I could be a Mount Snow tomorrow, but I got a class I gotta go take for an instructor. So uh, I can't go to Vermont. That'd be pretty cool. Brian Smuda is gonna be up there. So if you haven't got a Peak Pass, if you're looking for a Peak Pass drifter, he's got the discount code. I push it for him. It's BSMUDA, and his website is Season Pass Sales. My website's uh, midjersey.news, and uh, I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel. Um, my other website's dennisimons.com for my photography work, and you can look up my Facebook and all that kind of good stuff. But um, the board's done now, got a nice finish. It looks good, looks like it just came out of the uh, your board shop, your local board shop, and then that just saved you. I don't know, probably gone about $45, $50 for that kind of a job. So like I said before, flip the board around and um, you know, pull up on everything. Check your base plates, your tightness, make sure your screws are set. And it's a good, good time to go over all your screws and everything else to make sure uh, all your bindings are set. And uh, take, you know, always inspect your board. Uh, according to manufacturer's uh, directions, if there is manufacturer's directions that come with snowboards or anything. But, uh, you know, be safe out there. Uh, if something doesn't look right, take it to the snowboard shop. Uh, if you got questions, ask your local snowboard shop. Uh, they're good too, but, you know, I'm out there enough that I got to do this, my, you know, myself. So, um, you know, once in a while, if I have an issue, I don't have a problem taking it into the shop, but for minor, uh, quick sharpen the wax, uh, I do that myself. And um, if you're spending as many days as I, as I do on the mountain, uh, you're gonna wanna learn how to do this stuff yourself. And you can also select the uh, temperature of the wax to help you glide better. Um, sometimes you get up into these cold environments, like up in, uh, I was in Killington, it's minus 50 Fahrenheit at the top of the mountain. Uh, the top of the uh, K1 was closed. Sky ship was closed uh, north of uh, mid station. And then we took a fixed grip up from there. And uh, back in the day we had season passes. 
and we did one run. It was so cold and painful that we left. And last year I was up there in some cold weather. Killington is so cold in Vermont. Uh, I'm pretty much, I prefer spring skiing and snowboarding. Uh, when it, you can get the nice warmer days and you can enjoy it. Uh, but you know, if you dress warm and everything, you can get through most of it. But when you start getting below zero, uh, and you gotta start putting arctic powder into your board to make it glide across the flats and things like that. Um, it just gets tough and it's painful. It even goes through like, you know, five layers of clothes. So, but I pretty much showed you everything from warm wax to negative 22, uh, snow temperatures. It's always based on snow temperature, not the air temperature. But you can guess probably a, a good temperature by looking at the uh, air temperature forecast. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is ready to, ready to go for Friday, and uh, we'll see you out on the hill.